Can we start? Hello, testing. Right. Unfortunately, I can't see the time, but I think it's 11 o'clock. So we'll start. Uh, so welcome and thanks for coming to this session on uh, optimizations using MiniZinc. Uh, it's a quick one slide about myself. My name is Melvin. Uh, by day, I work at the Intelligent Warehouse. We do warehouse automation solutions. Uh, by night and on the weekends, I work on Mage Arena, which is a, a open source program using good old-fashioned AI, actually, to uh, attack the problem of uh, the card game Magic the Gathering. I gave a talk on this uh, at Force Asia last year. You can find the video online. But today, I'll talk about something else that's more related to the work I do with, with warehouses. So let's look at some optimization problems, right? So um, it's actually quite common. So if you use Google Maps to find the path to get to uh, the Lifelong Learning Institute, you probably <coughs> use like the, the, the fastest path, right? Take the shortest time that would take me to travel from where you are to uh, this place. This is a kind of optimization problem. Find the shortest or fastest path. Another kind that you definitely did it yourself uh, back in school was you when you did some experiments and you wanted to find a, a best fit line, which tells you the theory of uh, this particular phenomenon. And the line has to be sort of close to all the experimental points. So this is also some kind of optimization because the lines have to be as close as possible to all the points. Of course, it's not possible because the points are spread out. And much more recently, if you do machine learning type work, uh, machine learning, the training phase is essentially also an optimization problem because you want to find the set of parameters that would reduce the error of your model. And if you think a little bit harder, actually you've done this before because finding that best fit line in the last slide is also some kind of machine learning. And this line is also some kind of model, just a very simple model. It has only two parameters, which is the slope and the intercept. Of course, uh, modern day uh, models have thousands of parameters, but the concept essentially is the same, just it's scaling up in terms of the number of parameters. Of course, we can no longer do this by hand, we have to do this with an algorithm. And most problems, most optimization problems you encounter in the real world are more like the latter ones, right? They are fairly complicated and there are no fast ways to solve them, none that we know of anyway. Uh, this is sort of an XKCD comic that describes this problem. Usually we have many different real world constraints and adding all these constraints makes the problem hard from a computational perspective. And so this comes to this topic, which is if we have all these hard problems with many, many constraints and there are no efficient ways to solve them, what can we do? We still want to get some good solutions because these are practical problems. And there is this whole uh, subfield of computer science called constraint programming. And that is <coughs> devoted to this study of how do we solve all these problems? Essentially, we solve them with search. Um, just like you've seen in the previous talk, if you were here, we search through a tree of uh, possible options and find the best solution. Right? And there are some of the tools that uh, you might have heard about or have not. Uh, these are called uh, constraint programming solvers. Essentially, they perform a kind of search, but in a, study, in a somewhat clever way to avoid sort of enumerating all possible solutions. It just tries to search in the, the set of possible or valid solutions. Uh, most of these are open source projects, I think, except for uh, Cplex and Groby. These are commercial solvers. Okay, so the problem with some of these solvers in the past was each of these solvers require for you to describe the problem in its own custom language. So since this is search, the search is already implemented for you. So what we need to do is just to tell the search or the solver what is our problem, right? To model the problem and let the solver do it for us. But each of these has different uh, input languages, so that was kind of, kind of troublesome. You got to decide in advance which solver you want to use. And here comes the, the gist of the talk, which is about this particular uh, modeling language, which is called MiniZinc. MiniZinc is a solver agnostic modeling language. So it doesn't dictate um, what solver you need to use. It actually supports all of the solvers on the previous slide. So here comes the difficult part. I'm going to do a demo, a uh, number of demos. Uh, so the first demo is something that uh, you might find the Singapore mathematics syllabus uh, in primary school. This is called a word problem. Um, 
so oh, so I thought I will have hands to type, but I guess not. So I was going to type, type out the problem. But uh, so here's the, this is the missing IDE. You can also run this in the command line, but for the purpose of demo, it's easier for me to use the IDE since I only have one hand. So I will not try to type this out. Uh, I have typed it out beforehand. <laughs> okay, uh, just in case. So how it works is we're going to describe this uh, model to the uh, using the Minizing language. This is a modeling language. Uh, note that this is not a programming language. This is a modeling language. Um, so there are a few parts of this language. Um, first, we have to define what are our unknowns. Or here we call it the uh, var or the variables. This is variables in the mathematical sense, not variables in your programming language, because they're essentially fixed, right? They're, but they're unknown. So we have the ages. Uh, so the problem, the problem is replicated on top. If you, if you forgot, uh, it's a very simple problem actually. But just to illustrate how you would uh, model this very simple problem in Minisync. Uh, so we declare the unknowns. This is something like a bit like uh, Scala syntax, maybe like type colon, and then the name of that uh, uh, variable, and then semicolon to finish off that declaration. And then we have the the line about the sum. The sum is actually a, what we call a parameter. So it's called par, but you can leave out the word par. So you just type int colon. So the sum is in uh, 41. This is the total of the ages. And then we have uh, three constraints because there are like um, three. Oh well, yeah, three three sentences, right? Jake's age is three years older than Kyla. Uh, Jake is two years younger than Larry. Actually, if you think about the the letters, it's actually J, K, and uh, L. But anyway. And the uh, sum of the edges is, is, is this constant 41. OK, and then the last part is just to say, what do we want to solve? In this case, we just want to solve for some answer that satisfies the above constraints. And you can see the key here really is the constraints. And this is why this is called constraint programming, because we just need to specify the, the, the constraints and uh, run the model through the solver, which I pre-configured. And you can see that. Uh, it generates the answer. I, I mean, of, of course, in this case, you could solve it by hand, but the, the point is to just illustrate how it works. Uh, so Jake's age is supposed to be 14, which is the correct answer if you solve it by hand. OK, so let's get back to the talk. <coughs> so how does this actually work? Right? So I, I said we don't have to choose a solver, but of course, at the end, we have to eventually pick one uh, to use to solve the model. I mean, is both a language which you use to describe the model as well as a compiler. So the Minizing compiler actually produces a file called, in a format called FlatZing. So this FlatZing format is actually simpler than the Minizing language. Uh, it has much less features. And the solvers you see listed here have built-in support for FlatZing. So each of these solvers can take in a FlatZing file and solve for the unknowns. So that's what happens. So when you click Run, the compiler runs. It produces the FlatZing file and then um, passes it to one of the solvers right, to solve for the answer. So you only have to choose a solver at the, sort of the last step. You, and you can just change solvers quite easily by changing um, you know, in, in the configuration file which solver you would like to solve your particular problem. Because some of these are more specialized towards certain types of problems and uh, can do those much faster. All right, so the rest of the talk, we'll look at more examples of modeling and minisync. Uh, so come back to my uh, example at the very beginning, this XKCD comic. Uh, just because you haven't, haven't actually seen this comic before. Oh, quite a few people. Okay, that's good. Uh, but anyway, if, if you haven't, let me quickly tell you what it's about. Uh, it's slightly more complicated than the previous problem. So you have a menu with different uh, appetizers, and uh, the the character in the comic says, "We like exactly fifteen point oh five dollars worth of appetizers." The, the keyword is exactly. So it has to be. Uh, so you have to sort of have some combination of maybe you know three of some items, two of some items, and and so on, so that the, the total cost is exactly fifteen point oh five, right? So this is what we call NP complete problems. It's also called the knapsack problem. So how do we solve this in Minisync? Uh, let me get back to my ID. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Again, I think my screen is a bit cropped out, but okay, let me just crop away the output window for now. Because I didn't realize the resolution would be like this. Okay. Uh, so, 
All right, so we'll just say, okay, how many items do we have? We have six possible appetizers. Uh, and Minising uh, is actually somewhat high-level language, so model language. It actually allows you to use things like arrays, so unlike other languages. So in a, you can define an array. Uh, the indices are uh, some integers. So in this case, we'll say the integers from 1 to n. You can use arbitrary sequence of integers for arrays. Uh, this is a, so we say like this is an array of int. That's the type, and this particular uh, parameter, and this is a parameter because these are all known values, it's called price, and the price uh, is this. This is the same as the, the prices of the appetizers on the menu. So I'm just rounding that, I'll just use integers because I don't want to deal with um, floating point inaccuracies. Uh, this is 1505, which is the total value of the, uh, that we want to spend to buy appetizers. Um, oh, X is the unknown, as in, you know, solve for X. X means X, in this case, is a, is, a, is a complicated structure. X is an, actually an array of var int, so it's an array of unknowns. So what does it mean? X means how many of item 1 do I buy, how many of item 2 do I buy, and so on. That's the, the value in the array. Right? So the index represents the item, and the value of the, uh, the array at that position is the number of such items I would buy. Uh, well, never mind. Forget about Z for now. Okay, so constraints. Okay, now we need to write slight, slightly more complicated constraints, but still fairly readable, I think. Um, so we want to have something about the total, right? We're going to say the total is equal, well, the total price, which is number of items, the ith item times the price of the ith item, um, sum over all um, i from 1 to n. This is, if you're familiar with mathematical notation, this is the, like the giant sum, right? And ranges over i from 1 to n. And this, this sum must be equal to the total, which is 1505. That's the total cost of buying all these appetizers. Uh, and just to avoid certain impossible cases, we, we can't. This is because xi, we know x represents how many items, so it can't be negative. And this additional constraint is just to say that all the xi's are positive, uh, well, are non negative integers. It can be zero, of course. Means zero means we don't buy any of that item. And it's just somewhat slightly fancy uh, thing to show the output. Output is accepting a list of strings. The show built-in function converts an integer to a string and plus plus is string concatenation. So we just output the... So let me just show you the result. Ah, here we go. So it turns out you can just buy seven pieces of the first item which is the mixed fruit, which it's kind, it works, but it's kind of weird to just eat mixed fruits because you have so many different kinds of appetizers, right? <laughs> so, uh, well, it's not a problem, actually, because, actually, in fact, there are more than one possible answer. So here's where we're going to do the optimization part. Um, so we'll say, okay, so that, now we declare another var int um, z to be the total number of items I'm buying. So in this case, z will be 7, right? Z, z is how many things I'm buying. So we'll say, okay, let's not buy so many things. So we want to find a solution that minimize, mini, mini, pardon me, by. Yeah, start losing my ability to type when I'm on stage. Okay, uh, <laughs> minimize z. If, if you would say what? you are satisfied and there's actually many solutions, yeah. it will actually give you all of them. Yeah, it, it will give you all of them. Yeah, but in this case, I configured it to only print one just to save space. But you could, you could say, find me all the solutions, actually. Uh, but in this case, I just want to show the, 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 this possibility that we can, instead of saying satisfy, we can also say either minimize or maximize something. Right, which is like finding the shortest path, finding the model, the least error, you know, that's like minimize. So you want to minimize the number of items you want to, maybe you don't, you don't have, you can't eat so many things, so you don't want to eat so many things. So we're going to say minimize Z. And we save it and run again, we get a different solution, which also adds up to 1505, I think, uh, which has a variety of items anyway, so that's kind of nice. Of course, we could declare a more complicated function that says we, we want to reward a solution that has variety of things, whatever that means, and maximize that particular score. That's also possible as well, right? 
or we could even say something like, uh, well, I don't know how much, sorry, how much time do I have? <laughs> how much time do I have? How much time do I have? Sorry, just checking the time, because I can't see the clock. Sorry? 17 past. Ah, okay, 17. All right, I think I have time. So, set his... All right. So we can also say constrain, constrain, constrain uh, x1 not equal to 7. Like if we really want, let's try. Yeah. So if we don't want to eat so many of the first item, we can just say we don't want so many. So I mean, that sort of shows the power of constraint programming, right? We just have to write a new constraint. We don't have to write any code. I mean, there's not really code. I mean, this is code, but this is like describing what we want to do. Right? It's like, as I, t I was telling someone about this talk, it's like writing a query, if you, if you understand database. We just say, find me this, where, this, 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 and so on. I don't really know how he's going to do it, but you know, I don't bother about that. So it's very similar here, except this is much more powerful, right? It lets us solve all kinds of hard problems. OK, so let's move on to the last. Uh, so I don't want to overstay my welcome. Uh, let's move on to the last. Uh, that's the answer. So the last, um, the last one, I guess I, I won't solve it for you. I will show you how to model it. And maybe you can go back and try and solve it, or you know, and then see what's the answer. Uh, I guarantee you there's an answer. Uh, but I'll show you how you model it in the meaning sink anyway. So this is uh, especially created for uh, FOSS Asia this year, right? FOSS Asia this year is 2018. And this is what we call a crypt arithmetic problem. So crypt arithmetic means uh, we don't know what the letters stand for, but they stand for some digit between 0 and 9, right? So the first, uh, the first FOSS is some four-digit uh, number, and the second ASIA is also some four-digit number, but I've changed the digit and then just show you a letter. Right? That's why it's a, it's a sort of crypt, because I've encrypted the digits. So right? Instead of showing you a digit, I show you a letter. And these two four-digit numbers add up to 2018. Right? So the, the, trick, the, the, the goal of this problem is to find out what each letter, which is, what is the digit each letter represents. All right? Does that make sense? So some of you may have seen something like send plus more equals money. That's the sort of very famous one, send more money. Uh, but this is sort of a new one just for, just for this year. Anyway, sorry, that's my phone because my time is almost up. <laughs> okay. Okay, but anyway, um, what else? And I guess the other constraint is we usually say that all the letters have to be different digits. Right? So each letter represents a different digit. Okay. Okay, so how, how do we model this in MiniZing then? Let's see. I also have this in MiniZing somewhere. Okay, and here we are, I'm going to show you a little bit different, a few different features. So first of all, we can also in, include other files, just like you can in uh, programming languages. We can reuse certain things that have been defined elsewhere. It's because there's a lot of constraints that are very um, convenient and used in different problems. So one of them is called all different constraints. I think this is 11.20, I only have five minutes left. Uh, I'll go through this a little bit fast. Okay, so a new feature in the recent version is something called enum. So we declare enumeration of the f five letters. The sum is 2018, we know that. Uh, the unknowns is this array of letters. Here, so here you can see I'm indexing the array by letters. And we call it V. And the single, there's only one const uh, two constraints. The one constraint is the, this uh, equation, right, which tells us FOSS plus ASIA equals 2018. Uh, so 1,000 times V of F and so on. And the second constraint is this con all different. All different is uh, coming from this include file. So all the letters must be different. And you just want to satisfy the constraints. So solve satisfy. Turns out there's only one solution, actually. So um, nothing much to minimize and maximize. So just solve satisfy will do. And this is just the output line to print out the answer. Just as a... Homework, you can work out what this is supposed to be. Or you can write it in, actually there's a simpler way to write it in MiniZing. You can just declare variables for every letter. So you can say every letter is a var, var, var 009 colon f, var 0 dot dot 9 colon o. That will, that will be sort of the more straightforward encoding. Right? You just declare separate variables for every letter. Um, here I'm just showing you, you can also do it in this slightly more uh, succinct way, I guess. You can just encode it using this array of letters. 
Right, so let me just quickly wrap up here. Um, yeah, this the encoding. Okay, so in conclusion, this uh, hopefully you've found MiniZinc an interesting language, which will help you to mod model different computerization problems, and then later on we can solve them with any of the solvers listed here. Uh, that's, there's a really great MiniZinc tutorial by the folks that developed MiniZinc. You can get it from that link, and uh, the, the, there's also very interesting many MiniZinc models you can find uh, on this particular website. All right. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? Yes. How does this compare to approach using something like um, SMT that, um, you know, writing your language, writing your program in your language as well as using like SMT that by needs to turn that into something for like say, the same thing? Yeah, so that, I think that would be more like writing it in a custom solver language because you're tied to that particular solver, I think, if I'm not wrong. No, no, the SMT that has um, like support for a variety of solvers. Ah, okay, so then, it, then it's quite similar, I suppose. But I guess it depends on the modeling power of the, the library itself. Yeah. So, so some things may be easier to express in certain... So I've certainly found MiniZing to be quite easy because it, it allows things like arrays and sets, for example, which are quite common mathematical objects that you want to express in your optimization models. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that depends on the solver, actually. Not so much on the language, right? So the language does support sort of SAT-type problems. You can, declare, you can declare bool. Uh, bool is a built-in type. So you can declare a, a model with all bools. That will, uh, and you can pass that to an SAT solver, yeah. So if you, use, if you use certain languages, actually, certain solvers can't be used. So certain solvers do not, uh, do not work with um, uh, mix, mixed integers and floating points. So this is called MIP, mixed integer programming. So certain solvers don't support that. So if you have models with integers and floating points, it will just say it's not supported. So like certain solvers, like SAT solvers, only support uh, flat zinc inputs with only Boolean variables. So if you declare only Boolean variables in your model, then it will work on um, uh, those solvers. So you do have to be aware of the limitations of the solvers, I guess, when you declare your models. Yeah. Because the, the translation to, mini -zing, to flat zinc is a fairly straightforward translation. So if you use Booleans, it will just convert to Booleans. If you use floating point, it wouldn't somehow magically become Booleans. Yeah. Yeah, so there's also like native, native wrappers for the MiniZinc binary, like in Python or in different languages. You can programmatically call the, the MiniZinc uh, process without using the command line or using the ID. Ah, great. Oh, more questions. Yes. Not so much for the language, but more for your solver. So if you have more of these, the solver will just get very slow. You might have to buy like the proprietary solvers. <laughs> That's why people make proprietary solvers because uh, they can solve much larger problems. Yeah. For the, the open source ones, uh, there's obviously some limitations. Uh, but not, I mean, yeah, so it depends. It's like on a solver by solver basis. So this MiniZing language is actually like neutral, right? You can use whatever, how many variables you want and so on. Yeah, it doesn't really say. But when you choose a solver, you have to choose one that works well for your particular problem. Yeah. So I can solve the pseudo Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can actually write Sudoku quite easily because we have all different, right? So Sudoku mainly consists of all different constraints, but in the subsquares and in the diagonals, yeah. So actually quite easy to write with the all different constraints. Yeah, it's actually, but it's longer than one slide, which is, I wanted to show Sudoku, but it's just longer than one slide. It has like a few different, all difference, yeah. It's, do, it's definitely doable. All right, I think there are no more questions. Okay, thank you once again.